Hey guys, I'm back again. Yes, I'm wearing the same thing because it's the same night, okay? I just want to get this other video out. Um, it's sort of a rant, maybe not. Anyway, it, it has to do with the situation with uh, my client that I had a... Um, he goes to mental health... Well, he well he went to the one mental health program. Uh, ran into some situations there. Uh, he wasn't treated very well. And, um, I think there's a little something behind it. Uh, what happened was he was interested in a girl there. He really has a learning disability. And he doesn't, he didn't understand, um, I guess the rules, I guess you would say. And what happened was, he thought this girl liked him, and there was a lot of rumors going around that she, oh, she likes you, she likes you, she likes you, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the truth is, she did not like him that way. She did not want to date him, or whatever it was. So, instead of her common sense saying to him, no, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in you that way, um, she didn't do that. She, um, texted him very nasty messages, um, and he had let her borrow some books. All he did was ask for them back, and her response was, if you keep texting me, I'm going to file a restraining order, which is ridiculous. Um, so he didn't, uh, she apparently... Uh, was making him look like he was stalking her. And this is what I'm saying about people. <sighs> people will make false accusations about others. Call the police. File restraining order. Make up stories. What have not. And. Screw up the court system. With it. Uh, when nothing has been done to them. Ludicrous, I think. So anyway, we went to, uh, we had to go to the higher, uh, you know, because there was like case managers and counselors. He didn't feel he was treated well. So, I'll give you the first incident was that, um, the first incident basically was, like I said, that girl, that was, um, he had a little bit of a crush on, said to him real nasty, uh, I'm not interested, whatever. Then, she was friends with this other girl. Uh, there was more, let's just say, there was more than one incident where he was dragged into the office um, accused of, made false accusations by other clients that went to this program. So, he, um, I would say he was dragged in, like, four, maybe four times. Three or four times he was dragged in, um, and questioned for nonsense. Totally, totally blown out of proportion. It was Valentine's Day, and he made the statement, my... Um, you can please give me your opinion on this, as i like to know how you feel about this. Now, he has trouble expressing himself. That is his learning disability. So what happened was, he said, my Valentine's Day is going to be... He recently broke up with a girl, and he said, my, my Valentine's Day is going to be a massacre because I'm alone. Okay, nobody in the room... Saying it to himself, this comment. Apparently, two individuals went to the case manager and said that he threatened to kill people. So, they came and got him, took him into the office and questioned him. And he said, again, I said that because I was expressing my feelings. I'm a lonely. It's Valentine's Day. And I feel I'm going to be, my life is a mess, no, whatever. And then they can still 
took him, continued to take him, screening him, took him to the ER, had him psychologically evaluated. Um, because they, they were trying to see he was in danger of other people and see if he was suicidal or whatever. So, he, uh, went there. And a nurse said to him, uh, the, was, they were yelling, well, the nurse was yelling at him, basically, and then said to him, oh, well, he was saying he wanted to leave. They were refusing to let him leave because he wouldn't go back to this day program thing. So, uh, she, he said, why? So, she said, the psychiatric nurse said to him, you want to kill people. And he was like, whoa. Um, you know, she was putting words into his mouth. He, again, I'm going to express to you, said he was alone he was lonely and his he was upset and was expressing about his feelings uh and didn't say to anybody there was no terroristic threat nothing to anybody else what he was saying to himself um so i said uh, you know, he came to me, um, I'm his advocate, so he came to me, and I said, you know what, let's go to the patient advocate, we reported it to the patient advocate, we had our meeting today, um, we had the meeting with head of the behavioral health program, um, she is like this, she likes to sweep things under the rug, I've had other instances with her, with this type of stuff. So, she was she was trying to poo-poo him and everything else. And, apparently they said, that they were gonna, they were asked by somebody to, if they were gonna press charges against him. And I'm like, they, and he, was not, when he was brought into the office, this was not brought up to him. They did not tell him about these charges that they were going to supposedly press. So, um, he wasn't notified during questioning. So, he, uh, looked at me and I looked at him and, the, I, and I was like, okay, he obviously was not aware of this. And she kept saying, oh, well, they had certain protocols that they, and I understand hospitals have certain protocols with mental health individuals, people with, with mental um, disabilities. And, or let's say behavioral health issues, to be politically correct. Uh, I don't want to... Um, It's disabilities and behavioral. So, you know, the lady was telling him, was the manager over the counselors. So, she's explaining this, and I'm looking at him, and we're like, okay. He apparently did not know that they were going to, they were asked to press charges or something. And the other woman, the one that's in charge of the, of the program, was trying to say, can we move past it? Can we do this and that? And um, I didn't think she was going to do anything about it. Um, but I said to him, if there was anything you needed to express, express it now. I explained that he does have communication disabilities and he shuts 